it's Melanie, and welcome back to Grower's Notebook, where we take a deeper look at some of the ideas and concepts necessary to produce in a harvest you can be proud of. Today, we're going to get into the chemistry behind plant nutrition. Let's start by breaking down the three numbers we see on every plant fertilizer product. These numbers represent what's called the guaranteed analysis, or the NPK ratio which are the symbols for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium on the periodic table of elements, commonly referred to as the primary macronutrients. And at Hydroponic Research, we test each batch with an independent third-party lab to ensure that each container accurately represents these values on the label. So why are these three numbers so important? Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are the key elements contributing to plant growth and development. While the interrelationship between NPK are beautifully complex, each element plays an essential and specific role that can greatly enhance plant growth if used properly. Nitrogen promotes cellular multiplication and is primarily involved in the growth of shoots and foliage during the vegetative cycle. Nitrogen toxicity is characterized by an unnaturally deep dark hue and curling of leaves downward like a claw before turning yellow and dying. While a deficiency can be identified by a loss of vigor and color along with slower growth and falling leaves beginning closer to the roots. During the vegetative cycle, phosphorus is important for root growth and resistance to adverse climate conditions. Later in the flowering cycle, phosphorus becomes even more essential as a major contributor to the development of bud sites. Some signs of excess phosphorus include thinning of leaves and new growth, yellowing of leaf veins, and burning on the leaf tips and margins. Deficiencies can be observed in dried browning leaves. Another sign is red or purplish coloring at the petioles. Later stages will cause leaves to turn purple, curl, and drop. Potassium helps a plant activate nitrate uptake and develop resistance to low environmental temperatures, withering, and pathogens. During the fruiting stage, potassium is key in synthesis and transport of sugars and simple carbohydrates. Too much potassium will cause the leaf tips to burn. The top leaves will grow thin blades, while the lower leaves may develop dark spots and curl. Because potassium helps the plant protect itself against pathogens, the potassium deficiency can result in the plant being vulnerable to diseases. Older leaves will turn yellow or brown, and the edges will appear as if there's nutrient burn. Both yellowing in the middle of the leaves and burnt-looking edges is a sign of potassium deficiency. Also essential to plant functions are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, known as secondary macronutrients. Let's take a moment to identify some of the symptoms of toxicity and deficiencies for this group of nutrients. Calcium is critical in several plant processes, including strengthening cell walls, improving vigor, aiding in root development, contributing to mineral retention and transportation, and can even neutralize toxins. Calcium toxicity is uncommon, but will result in burn leaf tips and cause a lockout of other nutrients, showing up as a deficiency of other nutrients, most often magnesium or potassium. A lack of calcium is shown in new growth with dark spots appearing and deformations in the lower leaves. Magnesium's importance in plant development cannot be overlooked. It's an essential part of what makes up chlorophyll and is key in processing phosphorus throughout your plants. Magnesium is also the primary enzyme activator among all nutrients. Too much magnesium is also rare, but will result in a calcium lockout. Signs of calcium deficiency may mean excess in magnesium. More common is magnesium deficiency, which is identified by weak stalks, fading greenness in older leaves, as well as yellow and brown spots upon an otherwise green leaf. Finally, sulfur is another key element in the formation of chlorophyll. It also plays a major role in metabolizing nitrogen throughout a plant and strengthening a plant's resistance to pests and pathogens. Stunted growth in darker leaves signal toxicity in sulfur. 
not enough sulfur reduces a plant's ability to process nitrogen, and as a result, causes leaves to become pale. These macronutrients are gathered from the best sources by hydroponic research and blended to the ideal ratios to keep your garden growing healthy and vigorous. You might wonder how our formulas are able to be so comprehensive without the need of several bottles you might see required of other liquid nutrient regimens. The answer is water. Unlike the other guys, we don't sell it to you. By keeping our powders out of solutions, we are able to deliver the most complete nutrient available on the market. The richness of our product is also a reason to keep in mind that our powders should be measured and mixed into their final volume of solution to avoid reactions. Most specifically between calcium and sulfur, which would inadvertently result in calcium sulfate. So be sure to avoid pre-mixing into liquid concentrates. Just remember that this unwanted reaction causes precious nutrients to fall out of solution and build sediment at the bottom of your reservoirs, none of which will ever make it to your hungry plants. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Grower's Notebook. Join us again in our next installment when we talk more plant chemistry and demystify other components in plant growth biostimulants. We're talking humic acids, amino acids, and carbohydrates, just to name a few. So like and subscribe and hit that notification button to stay up to date to the latest episodes. And don't forget to leave a comment below about what topics or information you might want us to go over in this series. I'm Melanie, and thank you for watching Grower's Notebook.